Okay, so the texture mapping that method we have learned so far uh, required us to use an image as a texture source. Okay, so this is uh, the most common uh, method of applying texture mapping in uh, computer graphics in general. But um, another approach is not to have any image and to generate some uh, texture in real time. Okay, so we are not going to use an image, but we are going to create a texture that looks random. And one benefit of this approach is it can be used to generate also volumetric textures, such as clouds or smoke, okay, or uh, flames, uh, or even water, like waves. Uh, we can use this approach to generate uh, a texture. So one of the first methods that uh, was proposed to generate textures on the fly is known as Perlin noise. The idea here is we want to generate a noise pattern on the surface of our object. Okay, so let's say uh, we have a sphere. Now we want to generate a value at every point P, but we don't want this value to be entirely random because if this is entirely random, the resulting sphere will going to look like it is complete white noise. Okay. At the same time, we don't want it to be, uh, we don't want it to contain a periodic pattern that can be detected by the eye. Okay, so this is known as semi or quasi randomness, quasi random. Okay, so it is random, the eye doesn't see the repetition, but it is not entirely random, so it doesn't look like noise. So this is the challenge of generating procedural textures.